Hello and welcome. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about Armory Crate on this Asus ROG uh, Strix G18 for 2023 with an RTX 4070 gaming laptop here with 8 gigs of RAM. New for 2023, this is an 18 inch laptop. And over the last week to maybe 10 days or so, I've been trying to tune this laptop in all kinds of different ways in order to get the best gaming performance out of this laptop. Let's jump in here. So this is Armory Crate. I'll give you a little bit of an overview of this thing. As you can see, I've been trying to tune some things, but let's jump back to kind of a default setting here and I'll give you guys an overview how this laptop is set up. So out of the box, when you load it up, you'll find that Asus ROG Strix comes with the Armory Crate, which is their control panel for everything that's related to the laptop's hardware. We've got some CPU information here, some stats from the GPU, as well as memory usage and fan speeds. And what's more interesting here is that these GPU modes, we'll be looking at this quite a bit, and we'll be looking at these performance toggles here. So you can see here is silent, there's performance, and turbo. So these are the different profiles that I've been referring to throughout my gameplay videos, and I'll be discussing heavily in this video on how they affect the actual gameplay performance. And I'll jump into maybe Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077, just to give you an overview how these settings actually affect gameplay performance. And I'll talk about my repeated failure at attempts to try and get the full 140 watts on this RTX 4070 that has been promised by ASUS. Thus far in that aspect, it is a total disappointment. And I've done everything from reinstalling Windows, not once, but several times. Uh, the only option I have not yet tried is to do a clean install of Windows, which means I load up Windows ISO onto a USB stick. I boot up from that USB stick. I wipe the hard drive clean. That means all of the software is deleted. I format the right drive, remove all the partitions that come from the manufacturer pre-installed, including the recovery partition. And then I proceed to install Windows. And after Windows is installed, then I slowly install one by one the additive drivers uh, before I get into uh, a working laptop. So uh, maybe I will attempt that later if there is, you know, if I have time or if there's sufficient energy to do so. Also keep in mind that all of these machines are Intel for now because AMD, in my opinion, is just vaporware. As much as they announce exciting stuff and their GPUs, there simply isn't stock here in Canada. But as of now, you cannot find any of those in the market. They were due to be released at the end of February, but now it looks like I've spoken to a couple of retailers here in Canada and they're saying that April is the earliest time frame you can expect those laptops. Here you have a big dial which shows you your current frequency. One thing I'm very happy about is that the Intel CPUs, though they promise five gigahertz plus, on multiple occasions seen it actually hit five plus gigahertz. But uh, the caveat there is if you look at these performance levels, excuse me, if I go into turbo, uh, it basically cranks all of the power levels up. So you're looking at nearly 150 watts on this CPU to get that level of performance. However, in gameplay experiences, I've seen it around four, 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz in that range. It seems to be hovering at that range quite comfortably. Uh, with, I would say, decent power draw. I don't have exact power meters here to give you quantitative numbers, but it seems like it, it does quite well. So you've got performance profiles here, silent. Basically, you will not hear any fan noise from this laptop. Uh, it does take a dip on the performance though, because what this do does is it limits the CPU and the GPU uh, in terms of the wattage that's pushed to either of them, and you'll get less performance in silent mode. These are baked in profiles, but you can take my word for it. I've done enough testing with these devices to know that silent profile, it, it does give you a ding against your performance, uh, but the, the laptop actually runs in silent mode. I, the fans are running, but they're inaudible. At ear distance, when you're sitting in front of the laptop, you cannot hear them. Next up is performance mode, and I've done most of my testing in this mode uh, because it balances what I believe is the best combination between performance, uh, noise, and heat. Now, if you look here on the right-hand side in this GPU stats panel, we can see here that the maximum TGP for this GPU, which is the 4070, 8 gigs, is supposed to be 140 watts. This is some magical number that ASUS has made up. I have yet to see anywhere close to this number. Now, I understand that 25 watts is held back for the dynamic boost from NVIDIA. So when the CPU usage is low enough or power to the CPU is low enough, it will kick up the extra wattage to the GPU so you can kick all the way to 140 watts and get that massive performance boost. I have yet, however, to see that manifest in multiple games 
I've tested The Witcher 3, Borderlands 3, uh, Cyberpunk 27, 2077, City Skylines, Anno 1800, Fortnite, and I have not seen that number. I've been seeing 100 to 105 watts pretty much regularly, despite whatever mode I'm running in. Uh, and I've also done turbo mode testing. So turbo mode ramps up the fan speed to near 50 decibels or maybe even higher. It is quite loud. You can definitely hear it. It's audible at ear level. So silent mode, as you can see here in the fan speed panel, it shows 33 dBA. That's pretty much inaudible at, at uh, sitting distance in front of this laptop. So the fans are on, but you cannot hear them. So it's been a very good experience. Performance boost that I believe to around 40 decibels if I was to guess. Uh, maybe some of the other reviewers on YouTube have actually taken actual measurements uh, and then the turbo mode really ramps things up to 50 decibels which in my opinion is not worth it considering you get single digit performance numbers boost if that so what I've also done and some of you mentioned in the comments so thank you for commenting and you know letting me know but I've I've been testing as well in manual mode as you can see here I've been playing around with all the PL1s and PL2s of the CPU so this is the power level which is a continuous boost or long-term boost and PL2 is a burst burst mode PL2 gives the C CPU up to two minutes to run at this power level and the PL1 is the sustained power limit where it will run for long periods of time and you can see I've clamped this all the way down to 28 watts on the PL1 and 45 watts on the PL2 just to give the i9-13980HX with 24 cores some breathing room to to stretch its legs on the GPU tab if you look at the GPU I've been playing around with this I've also been trying to overclock my GPU a little bit however I have not undervolted yet maybe that's the next step I will look at however I doubt that undervolting this GPU is going to take me from 100 105 watts all the way up to the 100 40 watts that's promised so that said i have been able to get a little bit of an overclock going on this gpu i've gotten 80 megahertz on the boost clock and that seems to hold fairly steady here's a little pro tip do not restart your computer or hard shut down the machine hold control alt delete and just be patient eventually when windows will come up you can from that screen do sign out which will sign you out of windows closing all of the applications and you should be able to return to a usable state on the memory clock here i've also gotten a 200 megahertz offset it, it does show visibly in uh in the afterburner and the stats from reva stats tuner but it does not seem to have made a huge difference if anything at all on overall performance now here the dynamic boost it's set to 25 watt i've left it at left this at maximum uh, but I have yet to see this 25. So even if it was 105 watts was the actual performance, plus 25 watts will still put you at 100, 130 watts. I have not seen it go even anywhere near that as well. And then the thermal target, make sure you crank this all the way up if you're playing with the you know overall clocks or you know messing with them manually. Do keep in mind that if you adjust any of these settings, you'll need to click this apply button up here. When you do, ASUS will warn you that, hey, you're doing this at your own risk. Uh, and uh, if there's issues with the machine, then you know you could you could potentially break your GPU or your entire machine. I have seen it or heard about it happening. Usually this is quite rare, I would say, but your mileage may vary. So don't take my word for it and don't take, you know, or don't overclock your machine based on my recommendations. I'm doing this absolutely at my own risk. So I'll say yes here and it'll maintain my overclock. There's other thing to talk about here is these GPU modes because this year what is new is Advanced Optimus or rather an improved version of Advanced Optimus. And what Optimus does is it allows you, the machine to toggle between the integrated GPU, which is built into the i9-13980HX, and the discrete GPU, which in this machine is the 8K 4070 laptop GPU. When you get this machine out of the box, you'll find it in standard mode. So right now I've got this machine in ultimate mode, which means it's wired directly to the GPU. It's no longer using the integrated GPU. I've also tried switching all of these modes to see if it has any real effect on performance so I can get close to that 140 watts figure. However, thus far, there has been no change. No matter what mode I'm in, except for eco mode, I'm getting very similar performance on that GPU pegged to about 100 to 105 watts, and it does not really go quite above that. I have seen like quick flashes up to 115 watts. Those almost seem like blips that they're so infrequent. Being in standard mode, and you can toggle most of these modes without having to reboot. That's the beauty of advanced opt Optimus, except for the G GPU mode, which is here the ultimate mode. So this will actually toggle a BIOS setting and restart your machine to say that it's going to be fixed, or the MUX is then switched on so that the machine is hardwired and the display is directly connected to the 4070 GPU and the integrated GPU is disabled. If I open here my task manager, you can look here and see that I've got here a GPU one. Right now it's getting some usage, 50, 60 ish percent and the GeForce uh, GPU is running. So, and that's because I'm capturing video. So obviously it uses the NVENC encoder for OBS to actually encode these videos. That's why you're seeing this GPU be light though I'm not playing any games at the moment. All right, so after rebooting, we're back here to the Windows OS and we can now see 
see that it's toggled into standard mode. Now you've got some other modes here. There's eco mode, which focuses on battery life. It disables the NVIDIA GPU altogether. I cannot toggle that into right now because there's actually a usage on that GPU. It's lit up by OBS. And I also cannot toggle into optimized mode because this is also a, uh, this is the advanced Optimus version. This one won't kick in because again, I've seen, I'm seeing usage on the GPU mode. The other thing I've noticed is that switching these modes is very, very buggy. Sometimes it works. Sometimes you have to click a mode back and forth or toggle between them three, four, five times. Sometimes you click a mode, as you can see here, if I do, and it jumps right back into standard mode. It looks like nothing has happened and there's no message or any indication of why it was not able to switch these modes. So I had kind of had to do a little bit of figuring out on my own to see why that was happening. So I would say that Asus, please fix this. If you're giving us these GPU modes, but you cannot switch between them, or if they're not informative enough to know when and how you can switch, they're pretty useless in my opinion. This is why in, in my cases, usually I don't like using any of this software that's bundled with these machines because they're junk. So what I would do usually is set it into op unoptimized mode using the BIOS or Windows and just do some manual tuning to pin down the PL1 and PL2 on the CPU. And that's about it. Or I'll just leave it in the performance mode and run it in optimized mode, mode using advanced Optimus so I can get better battery life when it's unplugged and pretty good performance when I'm on my uh, GPU for gaming and whatnot. And I believe that's what the majority of the people will do. There's a few of us who are hardcore gamers or really enthusiasts who are going to sit there and tweak this for hours and hours on end. Uh, I can assure you manually, you know, tweaking and testing each of these offset clocks at 10 megahertz at a time took me quite a while. And I had to repeat that for several games to make sure that I had stability on my system. So it can be a very time consuming and intensive process. I like to either run in standard mode or optimize because optimize, I believe is the better modes of these. Eco mode, I do not use at all because it will basically disable the NVIDIA GPU uh, with no change basically to the battery life that I've noticed. And ultimate is discrete GPU. Again, because this GPU seems to not go past 105 watts, I, thus far, this mode is absolutely useless. There's no reason to run in discrete mode. I have not seen any other issues with gaming. Maybe if you're a competitive FPS shooter or if you're an esports player and you notice that there's some extra lag that's introduced because you're running an Optimus, perhaps you can boot into this mode and you get the, you know a lower latency. We'll leave it in standard mode for the moment. I've got some limits here set on the P CPU as well as uh, some overclocks on the GPU. Let's fire up the Witcher 3 and then we'll show you here how the performance is on this GPU. Here we go. Let's skip here ahead. I'll show you the options here. So if I go to video and graphics, I'm on RT Ultra. Everything is pretty much maxed and all of my textures and shadow quality here is set to max. NVIDIA Hairworks is also on. So with that, let's continue the game. All right, here we all. Do you guys enjoy The Witcher 3 still, or do you guys find it a little bit dated? I'm excited about The Witcher 4 announcement. However, I think it's going to be a years out before we actually see that in our or get that in our hands. So here we are. We're hovering with everything max. That's R3 Ultra. And I've got DLSS frame generation on as well. Let me show you that as well. That lives here under uh, video and display. So I've got frame generation turned on. So this basically doubles the frames. I'm getting very respectable frame rates here, I would say, you know, considering that this is a very old game, but it's got all the RTX and the texture updates. So it's fairly decent, uh, 56 FPS, but because this is a little bit of a slow paced open world RPG, you don't really need to run this at 300 frames per second. You're not really gonna be competing here in the Witcher single player gameplay. Uh, so 53 FPS, it's a pretty respectable gaming experience. If I didn't have any other laptop before, I had never gotten a 2000 series, uh, NVIDIA RTX 2000 series laptop or tested any 3000 series laptop, I would look at this and say, wow, this is very impressive. And I would be so happy with this laptop in a vacuum. We've got the wattage. You can see here that it's running around 95 watts. Sometimes it dips down to 70, jumps up to near 100 watts. There are 98 watts on the GPU right now, running at 80 degrees and 95% usage. So we're pretty much maxing out that GPU. But alas, you can see that it's it's maxing out around 100 watts. It's not going well above that. Not seeing that magical 140 watts number or anywhere even near to that. One more thing I want to point out is that once you exit a game, if you're in standard mode, it takes, you know, your screen is basically frozen. You cannot interact with the device for a couple of seconds, um, you know, between three and five seconds as it's toggling back between uh, the de dedicated GPU back to the integrated GPU on that Intel i9-13980HX. We'll look at Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing everything max and DLS fr DLSS frame generation on to show you what the performance looks like in that game. So as you can see here at, this, at the top left of the screen, the TPU again is pegged to 28 watts. I'm not trying to let that suck up too much of the juice. I want all of the power to be pushed to the TPU. But you can see at the screen here, it's hovering at around 90 watts right now. Here we are, we're finally in. Okay, so let me show you the settings that I'm running. 
And if I go over to graphics, it says custom, but I, you can rest assured that I've got everything turned on. So this is DLSS frame generation is on, and I've got all of this stuff on here. Ray tracing, I believe, is at the bottom. Yeah, and all of the ray tracing, ray tracing stuff is on. And excuse me, I'm running on ray tracing psycho mode. We're sitting comfortably, what is this? 40, 41, 42. It's a little bit all over the place, but if you look at that GPU, I'm only getting 77 watts now. It's even lower than The Witcher 3. Nope, there we go, 92 watts, 90, 95, nope, back down to 90 watts. Yeah, so overall, this has been my experience with this laptop. It just cannot seem to get anywhere near that promised 140 watts on the 4070 GPU. I know that Hardware Unbox canceled their coverage of the 4070 laptops and reviews altogether. Uh, and, you know, that to me says a lot that 4070 is perhaps just a, a marketing gimmick on a higher tuned or maybe a higher clock version of the 4060. You can see here I'm sitting around 39 FPS, ray tracing cycle mode. Everything is maxed on this uh, on this game and it varies quite a bit because this machine, uh, this game unfortunately is just not tuned all that well. The development cycle was a nightmare and this game was rushed. Uh, the launch was, you know, terrible and disastrous and for a long time. I waited to jump into this game until the 1.5 update released almost, I believe, a year later uh, on the PC before I ended up buying this game. That is the story here, so I won't uh, belabor the point too much. You can see here the GPU is now down to 75 watts, so I have no idea. Uh, I think that's it for this video, guys. Uh, I've tried to give you an overview of Armory Crate. Hopefully you understand now some of the configurations there. Before we close out, I did want to show you one more thing. How much junk actually comes with these, you know, control panels and everything that are loaded onto these machines. So if we jump over to processes for a moment, and this is what I want you to capture. So if you look at these, you know, all of these are processes that are related to to the armory case. Look at all these services and junk that is eating up your memory. And look at all the bundled junk that comes with these machines. If you look at this, armory socket server, armory agent, software agent, Asus app service, Asus hot plug controller, Asus link, remote, monitor, optimization, so on, so on. There must be nearly two dozen services that are installed and softwares that are installed from Asus just consuming resources and eating up processes on this machine. That is all. We'll wrap up this video here. Thank you guys for listening and hope you guys found this helpful. I will try to see if I can find a solution to this machine and you're getting it to run up to that 140 watts. Maybe it's a it's a known issue by Asus and they're just quietly waiting to release another BIOS update that will actually let us hit that. But as for right now, I would say this is false advertising and I am very unhappy with this machine. Thank you. See you in the next one.